Hi, so if you are using the latest version of the Mac OS and the latest version of uh, iOS, <coughs> iOS 18, then there's a neat little trick that Apple gave us, which is called iPhone mirroring. Now I made a video about this separately, but basically you get this new app called iPhone mirroring. And if you've sort of done the one, one time authorization, which I have done, <coughs> clicking this will connect your iPhone and show it uh, the screen of it on your Mac. This is not a simulator. Uh, it is not being simulated, it is just screen mirroring. So you're getting the screen of your iPhone <coughs> on your desktop. And you can use it, you know, you can just uh, use it like a normal iPhone, you can just swipe around, you can open apps, you can do whatever you want. And everything is running actually on the, yeah, it's actually running on the iPhone, but I'm just getting the screen over here. Now, that's very neat and it has some interesting use cases, but what has this got to do with Xcode? Well, turns out it, enables a very neat trick in Xcode. For example, I'm building this app, which is basically a step counter app, and I can run it in the simulator, which is fine, but sometimes I want to run it on the actual device, which I can do, of course, but it would be handy if I could do the best of both worlds, right? So I want to display on the screen right here because it's handy, I can look at it easily and I don't have to hold the phone. It, the screen doesn't time out. And at the same time, I'm going to run it on an actual device. So let's see how that works. So if I go here, I select, as you can see, iOS device, which is iPhone 54. That's what my phone is called, the one which is mirrored. <clears throat> so this is not a simulator. This is iPhone 54. And I've selected that. And I just run it. And if I run it, uh, it's connecting to the iPhone. And there you go. So now I am debugging my code on a real device on the MacBook desktop, right? So that's very, very handy. Um, for one thing, if I if, if you're running it on your device, then the screen sort of times out after 30 seconds or whatever timeout you have set, or you can sort of go in and, and, and disable it. Uh, but this is very handy because this screen will not time out. And so, uh, you know, it's handy that way. Secondly, it's just right in front of you, you know, so, so it's easier to sort of work with sometimes. And thirdly, it uses less resources as well, because right now all the processing is not happening on the simulator, uh, because I'm not running it, of course, or even on the Mac, it's just the iPhone mirroring. And if I go here, uh, the mirroring takes very little space. I don't even, yeah, there you go. So it's only taking about 28 megabyte of memory. And you can see the swap file, by the way, is 1.91 at this point. Um, but it, you know, it's so I'm not using any Mac resources and I'm actually debugging on a real device. The other thing is if I now, and this is a, like I said, a step counting, but this app, by the way, is already on the app store. Um, if you go to the app store, all of these are my apps, by the way, uh, if you want to check it out, it's called daily steps. It's for the iPhone. It lets you count your daily steps, shows you a nice four week trend and lets you send your, uh, set your own target. So go check it out. It's free of course, but it is working perfectly fine, uh, on device on my desktop. And the beautiful thing is that if I now want to actually, you know, um, go to the device, I can just pick up the device. As soon as I unlock the iPhone, I've just done that, you get the iPhone in use. And now without breaking session, I'm looking at the same display on my iPhone. And if I now start to walk around, because this is a step counting app, uh, then you will see over here that it'll start, uh, here we go, steps updated to 2716. So, you know, this is the physical uh, movement. Uh, being have. Actually, I'm not walking right now. I'm just moving my arm, swinging my arm to sort of simulate it, but you get the idea. So it's happening. And then when I'm done with sort of checking that the step counting is actually working, I can just uh, go back, lock the iPhone screen, click connect here, and without missing a beat, uh, you notice that the steps are 2743 as I moved around and as I connect to the iPhone 15, they are going to come back and I'm going to get the same thing. Uh, timed out, that happens sometimes, but I'm just going to try it again. Oops, that was unexpected. Uh, hang on a second, there we go. So yeah, you, you get a little occasional glitch, very, very rare by the way, and this is Murphy's Law because I was recording, so it happened. I haven't actually seen that before, but yeah, the latest step 2743, and uh, the latest step 2743 is right over here. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a neat little uh, trick to have um, to be able to sort of uh, debug this thing on this. Now, just to sort of show you how this impacts the resources in the activity monitor, like I said, the uh, soft file is 1.93. This is normal and doesn't really impact the performance in any way. I can decode very nicely. But if I now stop this, and if I now instead of this go to, let's say the iPhone 16 Pro simulator, 
and I debug on that. That also works fine, by the way. There's absolutely no problem with performance. I'm able to use it. My previous video demonstrated how this works. The first time the simulator comes up, it takes a little time. That's what's happening right now. But the second time it comes up, it's very snappy and you can just debug um, as you like. Uh, but uh, so, so that's launching and it's gonna take a few secs for it to start running, but it will work just fine. <clears throat> But the reason I wanted to show you is that this is actually, and, and you know, this is one of the reasons. Because this is a simulator, it doesn't have the motion data, of course, because you know it's not a physical device. So in this instance, this was perfect for me to sort of do it like uh, I've just shown you using screen mirroring. But if I now go to Task Manager, or rather the Activity Monitor, you can see that the swap file is now 3.27. Now, by the way, that still is not a problem. I mean, my 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 system is snappy. I can debug my code, I can work with it. Um, I'm generally not afraid of swap files. You can get to three, four GB and this has absolutely no impact on system performance uh, or even more. But uh, it does require sort of more resources if you run the simulator. So perhaps if you're really squeezed for space, you've got other things running in the background, that's another reason to use screen mirroring. So that's my little screen mirroring debugging on the Xcode tip. I hope you find it useful and uh, happy coding.